Welcome back, folks, to another exciting showdown brought to you by Income School and Project 24. We've got two websites ready to launch here. On the left, wearing red, is the Project 24 Rookie of the Year, Nathan. Nathan is coming into this race with over 15 different plugins. I was talking to him earlier, and he thinks this will really give him a boost and launch his website faster. And they're off. Looks like Ricky has exploded off the line. And what's this? Nathan can barely move. His website is trying to load too many plugins, and he can't compete happens to a lot of rookies. Ricky continues to offer lightning fast website content while it looks like Nathan has crashed and will need to uninstall some plugins. I'll need to make some critical changes. What a shame. So <laughs> WordPress plugins are awesome. They're kind of like having the right tools for when you're gonna run a race, but the wrong plugins can hold you down, kind of like duct taping cinder blocks to your shoes. So anyway, today we're gonna talk about WordPress plugins, which ones you should have on your website and which ones you probably should never have on the site. Uh, Ricky? Um, what? You know what, never mind. Okay, so we've kind of broken this out really into a couple different segments here. Kind of an always have on your website, a sometimes have, and then a never have. Yeah. Um, and you may not be surprised to know that the always have part is really very few <laughs> plugins. Um, but the first one here is image optimization. Yeah, I think in today's world, you pretty much always need it. Yeah. Um, page load speed has become really, really important. Yep. And probably the biggest thing slowing down your website is the images on your site. Yeah. So a few things we definitely want to do, obviously, is we don't want massive image files. And so you'll want an image optimization plugin that can reduce both the size, the physical size of the image. Like when we get these stock photos, a lot yeah. of times, or even if you take photos of your cell phone, yep. it's like 4,000 pixels wide. And yep. it's like, that's wider than the screen. Mm -hmm. So it's unnecessary. So um, there's actually two, if you go with kind of the short pixel route. So mm -hmm. short pixel is the image optimization plugin we typically use. It's not the only one out there or the only good one. Um, and short pixel has the capability to shrink them down. Yep. But there's also a second plugin made by short pixel called resize image after upload. And that one specifically kind of does that. Yep. And I kind of like the way it does it better. I can deactivate it and skip certain images if I want them bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, you're gonna want image optimization. Um, I like that short pixel will then go optimize the image so it reduces the file size without reducing the pixels. And it also has the option to create better file versions. So WebP is currently supported by WordPress, but also handled very well by short pixel. Most browsers are supporting WebP. And for those browsers, it will put up that image, which is usually substantially smaller even than a JPEG. So there's image optimization, optimization for you. Yeah. The second one that we have is a backup plugin. Well, this is one that's really, really important because especially as a beginner, it's very possible that you make some mistakes early on. You might end up writing your first couple articles, put some content up on your site, and then realize that you did something totally wrong, and you might end up losing all the work you did. Um, and if you don't have a backup option, and which there are a couple ways to do backups, but you can really find, uh, we use Managed WP. It's like, what, a dollar or two a month? Yeah, I think it's uh, $1.99 a month yeah. for daily backup. Yeah but they'll do a monthly backup for free. Yeah, so that's a great option to get started uh, because you don't want to lose all the hard work you've done. I really like the automatic backup yes. as well. Yep. Again, there are other plugins that do it, but ManageWP is doing so many other things as well. Yeah. Because we have so many sites, I can go on ManageWP and I can just like update the plugins on all the sites. I can kind of have a dashboard to see mm -hmm. everything that's going on across my whole portfolio, but it also handles the backups really yeah. well. Okay, that was it for always. So it's a short list. Most of our sites are gonna have more plugins than that. Mm -hmm. And so there's several on here that are in the sometimes category that we're gonna go through. But in terms of always, there's nothing else you absolutely need. Yep. Okay, next up in the sometimes category is like an SEO plugin. Right, SEO plugins. They do less for you than you think. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna make it so your content ranks or doesn't rank. Um, but they are helpful for setting certain settings to help, I guess, with how your site will show up with mm -hmm. the presence. So today, I think my favorite SEO plugin is Rank Math. Yeah. When I use one. So our WordPress theme, Akabato, that we use for a lot of our sites, has basically almost everything that I would want from an SEO plugin just built into the theme. So we don't use one at all on those sites, yeah. which is why it's a sometimes. But I like the way Rank Math handles schema. I like that it's dialed in with Bing's instant indexing. Yeah. And they're, all, they're dialed in and ready to go. I mean, it already works with Google's instant mm -hmm. indexing, even though Google's not opening that up yet. It's a good one. I think it stays on top of things. I don't love everything they do. It's a good one. Yep. 
security plugins. Now you just did a video about some about site security. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, jump over to see that video. Yeah. Um, but this is this is one that I think is um, even more and more important. Right. The security that I talked about was more of like you know attacks that could come to your mm -hmm. website and stopping them before they ever get to your website. Right. That's something that can be done through like a you know CDN. That's mm -hmm. basically all the traffic has to get through them before it gets to your website. So they're stopping certain sorts of threats before it ever comes to you. A plugin can't do that because mm -hmm. the plugin's on your server. So you can have these plugins actively like scan your website for malware. So if something does get through because you installed a bad plugin or something, another reason not to go crazy with plugins, right. it can find that threat and help you eliminate it. Yeah. Word Fence is a really good one. Um, there are several others out there as well, but Word Fence is probably one of the best known and most used. Mm -hmm. um, contact plugins, or, or contact form, I should say. This yeah. is something that you may or may not want on your website. Um, a lot of you may want a way for people to be able to contact you. Um, and so you might see a reason to use one, you might not. Um, there are a lot of uh, contact form plugins out there. Contact form 7 is a very popular one. Right. Um, but overall, contact form, again, it's one of those ones that you may need, but you may not. I prefer contact form over providing an email address yeah. because then I can sort of route them where I want them right. and then look through the, con the messages I get mm -hmm. when I want to rather than having them come <laughs> to my normal inbox. Um, there are also other ways to go for contact forms that are not putting it on your website directly. Mm -hmm. So this is installing a plugin on your website. Right. We could use something like JotForm mm -hmm. where we embed a form yeah. on the site or where they click a link and it opens the form in another page that's not even hosted on your right. site. Then you can still see, again, all of those messages as they come in, mm -hmm. organized right where you want them, not in your email. <laughs> right, right. And it's, then it's not, it doesn't even have to be hosted on your yeah. website. So there are options outside of that, mm -hmm. but I prefer a form yeah. over putting an email address or heaven forbid mm -hmm. a phone number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jot Form is a great option, exactly. Ninja Forms, but even just like a simple Google Good Form, point. Um, if you have a business email that you could create a Google Form, that's free. If you have like a, an actual business that sells mm -hmm. stuff and you have any sort of support yeah. needs or anything like that, you are absolutely gonna wanna have lots of contact yep. info, maybe a phone number. Yep. But for most making mm -hmm. blogs, niche sites, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, no, yeah. I, like don't, yeah. don't contact do me, it. please. <laughs> you need some sort of contact method from your privacy policy page. Yeah. People have to be able to get in contact, but just link from there to mm -hmm. the contact form or something. And while we're on the topic of people contacting you, you might need a spam plugin or an anti-spam <laughs> plugin uh, because a lot of people will try and contact you who have no business contacting you, bots, whatever it is, you could be overrun very quickly. Uh, some sort of anti-spam plugin yep. would probably be very helpful. There's some good, like there's a honeypot plugin mm -hmm. for contact form seven mm -hmm. that's specifically for yeah. spam that goes through the contact form. And then there are other spam plugins for like comments. If yes. you turn on comments on your site, you're gonna get so many spam comments <laughs> that you should you should have a plugin for that. Um, on most of our sites, we actually turn the comments off and then we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving a specific recommendation there because there are several that work well. My recommendation though is pick one with high ratings that currently has a lot of installs. Yep. So just go you know, look up anti-spam or spam mm -hmm. in the you know WordPress repository mm -hmm. for plugins and you'll find so many. That are I think good. that's a good point. Kind of while we're on that topic, when you're choosing plugins to use, I know we're not recommending precise plugins here. You need to make sure that you're choosing plugins that aren't going to jeopardize the security of your site, make your site slower. Um, plugins can be great to help your site function, have the functionality that you want, um, but they also can cause severe problems if you're not careful. Yep. Another one that you may sometimes want, we've used this off and on, mm -hmm. is a uh, plugin to duplicate pages on your yep. website. So if there's a page that you, you know, or even a, a post type that you build out and you would want to use that almost as a template going mm -hmm. forward, um, you could do that through a duplicator plugin. Or sometimes what we've done is we're like, I want to build out a new home page. Mm -hmm. We'll maybe duplicate the current home page and then sort of build it out as a like an unpublished other page. Mm -hmm. um, but what we want that as a starting point. There's a plugin called duplicate page that does the job really well. If you just, again, search duplicate page, you'll find several mm -hmm. that work really well and that, again, have very high ratings and are installed on a lot of websites. There are maybe a couple others that you might use individually. For example, every now and then you'll have a need to create redirects on your website. Maybe there's a post that you want to eliminate and so you want to create a redirect from what its URL was to a new post. Mm -hmm. You can do that through a plugin called Simple 301 Redirects or you can just do that through Rank Math. So if you have an SEO plugin, there's a chance you won't need a second plugin for that. 
So that's my other recommendation before installing another plugin, make sure that one of the current plugins you already have mm -hmm. doesn't already have yeah. that functionality. Yep. The more plugins we have, the more opportunity we have, one for malware mm -hmm. um, and two for interactions between themes and plugins and stuff that could take down your website. Okay, uh, that's all for our sometimes list. Before we move on to our never list, I'd love to hear in the comments uh, what you guys think we missed. Um, <laughs> you know that uh, I know that a lot of you probably use other plugins and uh, we'd love to hear uh, what yep. you're using, what works really well for you. I would say with the sometimes list that mm -hmm. there, of course, are going to be a whole bunch of other right. plugins if you have special needs on your site. Yep. If you're creating a membership site, you're obviously going to need a membership plugin. But those are more on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. The vast majority of you will never need any of the other plugins that we've probably missed. Yeah. But if there are others that you think <laughs> everyone or most people should have on your site, I'd, I'd love to yeah. hear about it too. Yeah. Tell me where I'm wrong. That's right. All right, for our never list, um, we only have one on here, uh, but it's social sharing. Um, social sharing Everybody plugins, puts them on they their all site. put them on and they run heavy code that can really slow your site down. It's amazing. You think, oh, all it's doing is placing these icons. Uh, no, nope. uh, you know, Facebook, they're, they're, they're running their scripts and stuff, mm -hmm. right? They're, there's a lot more usually going on with those social sharing plugins. If you go run a page speed insights report yeah. on a on a page that's got all the just those little social sharing links, you're you're often going to find those showing up as some of the things that are taking up the most time yep. on the page loading. Realistically, there are other ways to get people to your social media. I mean, I think a well sold in text link. Uh, that you just simply put yourself could be very helpful. I do realize that there are some niches that are very socially um, integrated and that there is very foundational to be a part of that. Um, but there are ways to do it where you don't jeopardize, you know, either the, the speed of your website, the security, um, and those sorts of things. And the same is true for a lot of things that we link out to. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are going to have a plugin for their affiliate links. Yeah. Um, and for Project 24 members, we do have one right now that we're, we're working on. It's um, if you're running PHP 8, it's still having some glitches, and so I'm working on that right now. The purpose of that is just to track the affiliate links for yeah. the most part, and just provide a little bit of ease around managing all of your affiliate links. But a lot of people are using these affiliate link plugins that are made to like, you know, make these big pretty boxes that mm -hmm. look like an ad. Oftentimes, what they're doing ends up more harmful than beneficial. Yeah. Yep. And by the way, a year from now, that pretty box you made is gonna look old. <laughs> yeah. And chances are that plugin is not gonna be up to date a year from now, it's just gonna look old. So yeah. think twice before you use plugins that are gonna add fanciness to your website. That is like the 1% optimization mm -hmm. at the end. If you don't have content totally nailed, don't even think about those kinds of things right now. Let's work on content, make your site awesome with the content. Use good images on your website. Use original images anytime you can. Those things are gonna help. The optimizations you can get by having plugins that do fancy things are probably gonna be negated more by yeah. the, the bad things that these plugins do to your website. It's like trying to run a race. It might the even be <laughs> <laughs> On your feet. <laughs> See you guys next time.